Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hafley Indian Women's Football Webinar. We've had two very exciting sessions in the past two days, getting the perspective of players and the FIFA administrator. Today, we are going to move on to another very, very important component of, uh, of the game, that is the coach. The coach is someone who can make the life of the player very, very easy, make the game very exciting, and actually help the player achieve their goals. Please help me in welcoming our panelists today. Uh, our panelists today are the senior Indian national team coach, Maymol Rocky. And uh, we have with us coach uh, Thomas Denaby, who is the Indian national under 17 women's coach. Welcome to both of you all. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to be starting off uh, talking to Maymol. Maymol, uh, can you please tell us a little about your journey, <clears throat> how you started off playing football yourself and your journey to becoming the Indian national senior women's coach? Uh, in 2000, I played for the under-19 team and then I played for the seniors. I played uh, for the national team for three years and then I slowly got into coaching. I was more interested in uh, going to the field. So it was like one of the coach told me you can join uh, to come for the session and be with the grassroots children because those years my coach was training the younger ones. So I should just go and stand in between them and make two teams and make them play. So that was my time how I started coaching. In fact, then I slowly I started doing my licenses. I did my DCB. In 2010, I completed my B license. After that, I think um, uh, I was called for the national team in 2012 with the under-16 team as a head coach. Uh, yes, for under-16, it was very difficult for us to qualify. Um, but then I was with under-16 team for three years, uh, three or four years. Uh, because under-16, we should play after two, two years. So I was with the national team. And then I was with the senior team as an assistant coach first in 2016 under Sir Shajit. He was a head coach those years. And then I took over the team in 2017. And so far, everybody knows how was the journey of the senior team. In 2019, at least I believe it was the golden year for the women's football, especially with the senior team. And then now 2020, let's see when it starts and what happens. But uh, yes, this is a short brief, brief thing, how I started my playing career and then went into coaching and uh, doesn't want, I don't want to say much things, yeah, but it was definitely difficult where I am now, especially being a female. Uh, but then, yes, I enjoyed my part uh, whenever I was doing my courses or whenever I was doing playing football, I enjoyed myself. And that's what I'm doing now. And that's my job. And I feel um, the best. Uh, the I'm the luckiest person. What I love and I'm doing as a job. So that's really something which uh, you know somebody can get and at the end I think yeah it is it is fun and it is um, you enjoy it every bit of the time what you spend on the field you're living out your passions yes you can say that <laughs> so that's excellent very few people get a chance to do that and I'm so happy you have that opportunity uh, tell us Memol, from the time you started with the Indian national team what difference have you seen in the girls, the training, the performance in the last eight or nine years? What changes have you seen? Uh, if you say last eight and nine years, definitely uh, if you start from the quality of the camps have improved, the quality of the stays have improved, the performance, uh, I cannot compare it because those years we were not we should directly play AFC tournaments and now we play the qualifiers. So the level of football definitely has gone higher in every country and the tournament, uh, that also has gone at a higher level. So I cannot compare it like that. But yes, the girls are getting the best facilities and best coaching facilities and the best thing what a girl, I think a footballer girl should get, at least at the national team level. Are girls taking it more seriously today than they were a couple of years back? Oh, that. Oh, yes. Because I remember the senior player. I started with the senior team in 2016. 
those years we didn't have any national league and things so the girls were like saal mein ek saal practice karna they should work in a year once or whatever two months or three months and then right again they should wait for the next year so girls also didn't have anything you know to continue with or do with but now i think um, i remember when i we, were, we should have the small breaks between the camps they were so eager to get into that with me or my physio what now what we should do ma'am what is the next what i should do what i should do so many we need, we have to prepare plans for everybody in a break because earlier i remember we should do nothing but now like players want to perform and players want to do um, that's the best part in the at least youngsters who really want to get into you know uh, professional now the league system is getting formed and it, the players want to perform and earn money and you know uh, get their name and fame so it is that's a good sign one one side for the national team itself and for the players also such an amazing answer from imol tell us what is the average age of your team now compared to earlier 21 years old uh, most of them most the most of the girls are below 21 i had uh, two senior players that is aditi and asha lata asha lata was my captain of the team and then slowly bala joined in later because in this 2019 I think we we had all all young players, and I, if you see, lot of youngsters were called into the camp to see if they could fit into the team. And if you see the national team list, it's all about young players. Excellent. And uh, do you believe a good mix of young talent and a little experience is what is a, a secret of success of the uh, uh, team? Oh yes, definitely. You need to have some seniors in the team and mix some youngsters. because uh, if it, if they go together and the mixture is really good the performance will definitely you know you will get the performance from the players okay tell me memol as a young player growing up in goa there were so many role models for you to follow uh, like in the yester years goa kerala and west bengal and northeast were the only places where there was actually women's football rarely would you see women's football in any other part of the country uh you grew up with all these legends in goa who did you idolize was any of were there any of those players your role models uh, there were many senior players i remember my coach sir motwal he should always name them you know when you are playing you should have big muscles like them and you should so we remember some players who especially who and ma'am juliana she is one of the senior player and she was with the department and uh, heard lot about her, them and we never saw them playing but the way we heard it from our coaches they were the people who we should really you know think to be like them and you know play like them because then we should think our coaches should name uh, the younger girls our names because the way they played we also wanted to play like them and be you know like a role model for the younger ones especially juliana ma'am and yolanda ma'am they were two thing two two um, female footballers who were really named named and they were the role models for all of all my generation girls especially they are absolute legends so not only players in goa but for players all over the country and what i really feel is today as a coach you are in a coaching position uh, you do find it important that you talk about the yesteryear stars to the future generations of players let them google them let them find out what their stories were what their history was and what gro- glories they reached and get motivated to do the same themselves yes tell me um what do you look for in a player uh when you are choosing them for the national women's team currently especially it's like uh, how mobile a player is uh, at least when i see a match i want to see it's not like oh some earlier earlier we should think oh if we score a goal we get into the national team i take a long kick i get into the national team it's really not that it's lot of things technically what we look at at least i generally what i just want to see i need to see players who really um, move on the field and who's using their brains just don't dribble by themselves and you know are not passing to players so it's all about a lot of things little by little what we really think and it's not me only doing it it's uh, we have a scouting panel in aiff they are all over india and uh, if they see any tournaments or anything happening our head of aif uh, scouting he sends them there and we get calls and saying that this girl is there in so and so state she played this this tournament memo you should have a look yeah then i think then i talk to the person who went and scouted 
we have a chat and we see yes if that player is really good what we are looking especially position wise we call up for the trials at least so it's not like earlier we should just wait for one tournament or one nationals to get the players now the scouting is in day to day basis so it's not for the players i think they just need to practice and play more and more matches and tournaments i think yeah i was coming to that question next that uh, in the last two years i think the senior national women uh, senior women's team has got a lot of exposure trips to a lot of countries abroad has that helped their performance uh first of all like if you say about exposures i really need to thank aiff and the indian government who believed in women's football and they gave us this opportunity to travel overseas and play matches i think with my team especially the girls we had all like younger bunch and most of them were young so for them it was like how you travel first of all how you need to be like a professional think like a professional especially and i think definitely the matches what we played for the whole 2000 2019 if you see we started with slow ranking teams we started with hong kong we started with indonesia because these were the countries what had qualified for the olympic qualifiers round 2 we slowly went for to turkey to play in, in the turkey cup so there we played like countries like romania and some tough countries also then we played the saf everybody knows we were the champion so there we got some more matches and then once we came back i start like we had planned to play little ha- uh, higher ranking team we played myanmar in myanmar and it was a draw so you can imagine playing myanmar in myanmar and keeping it in a draw and that too into olympic round 2 which both the teams wanted to qualify and we had 7 points each and it just because of goal difference in the national team was out but you can you can see then later on we started we played with uzbekistan first match we lost 5-1 second match we drew 1-1 the last match what we remember and we everybody was you know into it it was um, vietnam what we played first match we lost 3-0 second match we drew 1-1 so that was definitely a higher ranking team and what we i think the result was really good it's just because girls were getting more chances to play with uh, girls team who are definitely you know better than us and the performance slowly enhance of the girls and the confident levels uh, also came up and the girls now believe we can do we can you know play better than some national teams for sure excellent so keeping the morale of the team during these covid times what are you all doing to keep the team united to make sure they are keeping fit uh we have not started or uh, players all together any zoom calling uh, we have not started yet but most of the players are doing strength conditioning uh, agility what was given to them a short plan which was given to them when we get back because we were supposed to meet back in may so they had this uh, small plans with them some girls are in the cent- uh, some physiotherapist center where they are doing a lot of strength and things but definitely it will it will be a you know a, a kind of a bit problem once they get into the field because i'm sure field is definitely different than you know strength conditioning mobility everything will be different once you get into the field it will be you know again we need to start it all over again with the players but yes the players are ready to do it so we should not have face much of problems and the girls want to do it that's the best tell me mebol one last question for you um before i come back to you later is the iwl how does participating in the iwl help the girls in the senior national team does it help them does it make their game better definitely iwl uh, helps the players uh, because they get more matches at least whatever matches they play at least i believe they are getting some more matches as a scout if i go there or some scout who are sitting they can see they can say i remember i was there for iwl and we had another scout that person was not into women's football but he was a national team coach earlier not with the women's but men's he was telling me oh that girl is good so i was like she's a national player oh this one looks you know better i said she's a national player so i was feeling good so when somebody is there who we can you know share our things and i uh, that's something good so girls are getting chance to play they can be a professional footballers as they are getting you know income is there for the players and i think the younger ones who have never got into the national team and want to play for the national team they are you know rubbing their shoulders with the national players so i think 
that is one more advantage what is there for us and i think the girls are happy about it also finally they are getting their chance in the sunlight yes <laughs> yes that's excellent memon uh hang in there we're just going to get over to coach thomas and we'll get back to you sure uh, coach thomas welcome to our show thank you yeah uh, coach thomas over to you now uh, please introduce yourself and a little about your journey and how you reached the indian national under 17 yeah yeah it's really a long way <laughs> i will try to make it short uh of course as uh, everybody else involved in football i started playing very 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 early uh that was the only thing i did all days after school uh we played football 2 3 4 hours every day on the backyard and so on and then the fields around in the area where i lived uh and i started playing in a local club but when i was 13 years old uh the club hamabi uh actually the club uh, that slatan ibrahimovic for the moment uh, uh, owns a part of and <laughs> uh, Uh, I started playing for them when I was 13 years old, and when I was 15, I started playing for the under 15 uh, national team, and so on. And I played all the way up to uh, under 21. I played my first under 21 uh, cap when I was 18 years old, and I started playing in the Swedish league when I was 17. So I was really early. Uh, but uh, when I was 18 years old, and everything was going. the right way i had a really bad uh, knee injury so i was out from football for 11 months and many people coaches and so on they said he will never come back uh, but i did so i played another 9 10 years elite football so but i didn't reach the senior national team uh, yeah and uh, finally it, when it was time to quit playing uh, my doctor said thomas you can't play with your knee uh i will not allow you to enter the field no uh, anymore you you have to quit playing now so and after that i start coaching so and now this uh i live with a titanium knee <laughs> because of my old uh, injury yeah so i started with the men's team a uh, senior team uh in the third division in sweden and after that i've been a coach for a lot of different teams on the uh, highest level both women and men's team on the highest league uh, in Sweden the premier league and actually i think i'm one of the only ones that have a gold medal both in the women's and uh, uh, men's premier league so yeah and uh, after a couple of years in the uh, women's league when we we won the gold medal and so on uh the swedish federation asked me if i want to take the the national team for sweden so i became the head coach for sweden for about seven and a half year from 2005 to 2012 uh, and after that uh, yeah i went to nigeria also coaching for two years so but uh, one thing that i'm really proud of uh, not so much about my career but playing and uh, and coaching and so on but i actually have been to all the uh, big tournaments since 2003 so i've seen all world cups all uh, olympics all euros and of course the last avcon when i was head coach for nigeria since 2003 so i've seen live uh, championships for a long time so i will say that i have seen the best players and i know the level <laughs> you need to reach uh so that that's a good experience i have been to all the championships yeah uh of course i have a uefa pro license i have that since 2007 and before that they call it step 4 in sweden and i have that since 99 1999 so uh, i've been in this <laughs> in this uh yeah role for for a long time now lovely that's great to hear <laughs> give us a little um uh, background about your experience with the nigerian women's team uh, the nigerian girls are very very uh, strong and fast 
uh, they really have a, I would say, a high fitness level. <laughs> And uh, also, of course, good footballers. Uh, but I think we can find uh, girls with uh, as good technical skills as the Nigerians and Swedish players in also in India. Uh, but if if I should point on something in Nigeria, the, the players were very physical. Okay, so if I were to ask you, what is it that the um, under seventeen Indian national girls team need to learn from? Nigeria and from Sweden, what would that be? Uh, from Sweden, I guess uh, a little bit of organization and uh, discipline, and uh, yeah, but it's it, it's hard to give them the <laughs> fitness level of the Nigerians because they have it naturally. Uh, but we're trying to help them with that also, and I think we have improved a lot since we started. We can see that when we do the tests, so. Uh, but I think uh, as the footballers, they are as good as the Nigerians. Excellent. Uh, Coach, you can go ahead with your presentation now. Yeah, you yeah. Wait for everybody. Yeah, we are ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the topic today that I would ask to talk about is how young Indian uh, female football players need to prepare themselves to make it to the Indian other seven team. So I will not talk so much about team building or tactics or more about uh, the journey for a young girl from young age to, to, to reach the under 17 level. So the first things I have my, I don't use PowerPoint today. I use Thomas Point today. <laughs> the first uh, step to do is to detect the talent, of course, uh, and you, Usually find her uh, on the backyard, on the schoolyard, running around with a ball, love to play football, and the most important uh, that you can see her or him sometimes doing is playing football. So that is uh, the one that you should have an extra eye on to trying to uh, really, and that's my next Thomas point, encourage. <laughs> So if you find that uh, nice girl, try to help her to uh, enjoy a good club uh, with a good coach. And when I say good coach, uh, I'm not talking about in this young age about tactics or uh, experience as player and so on, but a coach with good leadership that is good on um, ex uh, encouraging girls. Because in these early ages, uh, it's important to have fun. Uh, you need to uh, have a feeling with the girls that they are really waiting for next time when the, the training session is. We want them to come back. It's not so much about uh, demanding and tactics. Uh, of course, they can start to learn the, the most basic rules of the game and so on. But it has to be encouraging, encouraging, fun, and a really calm uh, environment. Because the first step for us in football, uh, in competition to all the other sports and so on, we want them to choose football, our sport football. So they really should long for, for the next session. And that is uh, most important in the, in, the, in the early age. So, okay, if we get them to a team, I hope you can see. Yeah, coach. Yes, good. Uh, yeah, when we start with the really, really young ones, uh, it's most uh, priority is to uh, develop the technical skills, of course, passing, shooting, receiving, heading, ball driving, dribbling, and all that. And also the the one-on-one -on -one situation, defensively and offensively. Uh, Small-sided game is... Uh, important, uh, try to have few players so they are involved in different situations many times, to repeat, to repeat. If you have too many players, usually when they are this young, uh, the best one will have the ball and maybe one more and you have two, three players that are just running around and not playing. So uh, a lot of balls and a lot of situations where everyone can uh, develop from their own uh, 
uh, level. So, and also when you play the small games, it helps you start reading the game and uh, develop your skill to work together with others to see some situation and also the first steps of cooperating with others, with your teammates and so on. Uh, yeah, man, uh, yeah, if you give, when you give uh, instructions uh, and encourage the players to try new skills, uh, and also, even if it should not be, uh, yeah, it, it should be in an encouraging uh, uh, environment. Try to be a little bit uh, specific because in, uh, in your instructions, I mean, now uh, we very often say, and I also did when I was young, I say, you have to be a, a better passing player. And what does that really tell me as a player? Yes, my coach wants me to be a better passing player. But what is you really talking about? Uh, what, did, what do they tell you? Do you talk about left foot, right foot? Is it long balls? Is it short passes? Is it inside pass? Is it outside pass? Or if you technically can do all this moment very good, it can also be uh, a problem with your reading of the game or the decision making and so on. So you really have to find out uh, to help this uh, young player what, what it is that I uh, need to, to work with. So try to be specific, but uh, in a good environment. And also maybe uh, they, there is some uh, player in the team and so on that can be a good role model that already learned this moment, use the player to help the others to, to show them what to do. Yeah, but about the fitness and so on, uh, it's not uh, anything that you should put uh, any priority on. So it's enough with the ball movements, uh, uh, they can play tag and so on, uh, relay races and all that. Uh, that's enough for this young uh, girl to start with. Next step, when you come to the early, early teens, uh, it's more uh, that you also need to, yeah, of course, you, you keep on working with the, the technical skills, uh, but more and more in, in game-like uh, moments uh, with combination play and or with opponents and so on. So uh, to take, do, do the technical skills together with some kind of uh, also understanding and reading. And it's important to start playing more and more exercises with opponents, like four versus four, with maybe some two extra players, two Yorkers, when you do a possession play to encourage to, uh, to have a good passing game and so on. Shooting and finishing from different angles, from overlap, from crosses, from wing zone and all that. Uh, so you uh, trying to do it a little bit harder uh, each time. and. As you can see, the development of the girls try to find a new uh, skill for them that they can try, uh, try next time and so on. And also different uh, runnings and finishing from uh, through passes, pen penetration passes. We can start with defending, two versus three and so on. One play to press, one to cover and start to also learn the, the basic in, in uh, defending together. Uh, and the, f the fitness work in that uh, age, you can start a little bit with the uh, body workout. Uh, maybe you can use a little bit later the barbell, but uh, I guess you shouldn't uh, use uh, weights at that uh, early time. But learn to uh, do the basics, uh, learn the good technique for, for the future and so on. And maybe you can start with some extra uh, endurian, endurance. But uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, most of it, uh, it's enough uh, what you do on the football field. But sometimes you can, can do some extra maybe. But also in, somewhere here in this age, it's, uh, it's time for you to, to uh, decide, do I want to play just in my team or 
uh, do I really want to be a, an elite player and come into to the next step? And it's here, late teens. Maybe, maybe you see. And uh, when we now at that, uh, when in the late teens, maybe the the technical skill, yeah, you 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 will always work with that your whole football career. But now it's maybe something you do more in the warm up or cool down and rehab and so on. And now it's really important to start to 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 read the game for for the bigger field because in, in the end you will play on a field that is 7500 square, square meters so you need to know the tactics the reading the cooperation the judgment and all that and it also uh, as a coach you have to be more more specific to talk about uh, uh, the situations from a player's position because in younger age maybe uh, I prefer that players uh, try to play in different uh, positions so you don't tell them when they are seven years old you're going to be the right fullback because that could, could be the, the best player, the best forward you have five years later. So, But at this age, in the late teens, they definitely need to find uh, their position and you have to start to help them to do the best out from uh, that situation and so on. Uh, and the game gets get bigger, six versus six, eight versus eight, and full field, of course, 11 versus 11. And also learn to to work together with uh, in defending with press, cover, support, and marking, and the priorities, and at what time will you use uh, different uh, 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 skills of, of yourself to, to defend in a good way. And also the attacking game uh, from wide areas, the central areas, uh, 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 yeah, switching of side uh, and all that uh, similar situation, uh, of course. And uh, yeah, now we are almost there. <laughs> but uh, now, if you're one of the players that think that I really want to be a elite player, uh, you also have to put some extra on the on the workout. Uh, so. Uh, both the strength, strength training with barbells and weights, coordination, of course, in injury prevention programs and all that, endurance with uh, intervals instead of just uh, one tempo, one pace. But the most important is to prepare the player for high intensity runnings and uh, repeated high intensity running. Because when it comes to the most uh, important situation in football, you have to do it in high speed. Uh, you can run 50 runs on 80% and you will not have a big impact on the game. But the 100% the runs at the right moment is the one that will probably help you to win a, a game. And as much runs you can take, it's so important, the high intensity runs. So you have to work with that also with sprint and hurdles with sprint and all that. So. And of course, if when you're an elite player, you definitely, definitely need to be competitive, <laughs> uh, really mentally strong. And also, uh, sometimes you have all that, but you also need, you need to have a, a, a body that is able to handle six to eight training sessions a week. Uh, so you need to start because you can't play three times, four times, and then from one day to another start to train eight uh, because you will probably have an injury or something or you get overloaded. So that's why it's important to uh, yeah, have maybe one, two when you're young, three to four, next step, four to five, and if you're a lead player, a little bit more. But So you, you have to take it step by step. But for example, uh, the India on the 17 team now, we have uh, five football sessions uh, a week, Monday to Friday, and two of them, we have uh, some extra endurance, different endurance. And uh, we also have two uh, workout sessions with, uh, yeah, the girls now really start to lift uh, heavy weights on the barbells and uh, coordination and all that. 
and we try to play a game also once a week to to work with the tactics and so on. So that's the situation for the team for the moment. Finally, to be to be successful, there's a lot of things you can say. There is different styles, and there is no really uh, faucet. But definitely, uh, you know that uh, hard work is the <laughs> probably most important of all. Uh, to every time you go to training, concentration, focus on every training, fulfill what you're asked to do. Lots of energy, willing to develop and to to do that little extra. Huge commitment. You, you must have the feeling that this is probably the most important I can do for the moment. And also one thing that is really important that I can say that when I talk with some of the players in India, it's the, that I think they miss sometimes is the regularity. Because you need to play football all year round, not two, three months and then have one months uh, off or two months off and then play two, three months again and then have two months off. Maybe you should have like three, two, three, four weeks off once a year, but then you need to go on for 48 weeks a year, regular training, uh, because every time you go back, you have to start a little bit uh, again. And also patience, that is really important. Everybody is not ready when they are 15. Some are when they are 17, some when they are 20. And we also have the late bloomers coming on, coming in later. We have national team players that never play a cap for a, a youth team, but they come directly when they're 22, 23 into the national team. So give them time. Patience is very important. And about the focus, it's also important. Yes, stay focused when, you, when you're on your field. Uh, but you also have to have the, uh, the ability to turn off sometimes because otherwise, if you're always in a in red zone and always think about only football, 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 it can be too much also. So you need you need to sometimes really relax and think about something else to to have energy when you come back. So then, of course, finally, the intensity of the game because that is so important today. If you look at elite football, they, it looks like, it starts to look like they are 100 meters runners with, with the ball. You see some of the counter attacks today uh, when you look at the best teams in the world. They go from one uh, box to another box in six, six, six seconds with the ball. And uh, we, have, we have to prepare to, for all that to, to come to, to, the, to the national team and to be successful in the team and so on. So, uh, that is really important to to speed up the the tempo and the pace of the game. And you, you, of course, you do that with runnings, but you also do that with quicker decision making, a uh, few touches on the ball, and so on. Uh, so, uh, and football is really a team sport. That is a, probably one of the most important things to to think about. It's not about me; it's about my team. And uh, you re really have to be a good teammate, and you really have to see that I do it with my friends, I win with my friends, I lose with my friends, and we will do this together. So, if you can do all that, you probably have a good chance to enjoy the under 70 national team in the end. Yes. Thank you so much, coach. That was really enlightening. Can you please put up your last slide for everyone to just have a look at carefully one last time? Yeah, thank you, coach. Thanks so much. Just want to ask you, um, mental strength is a very important aspect of a player. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, I didn't hear the, the beginning. Sorry. Mental strength. Uh, like mentally, the player has to be very strong. Yes, of course. Uh, because uh, definitely you, you have to be very focused many times a week. And you have to be prepared, have a body that's also 
that was a little bit what I was talking about that can handle the situation. And when I say body, I mean also mean your 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 brain, your mentally capacity to handle all this, to to think that it's so important because if you if you need to train six to eight times a week, you have to put something else uh, besides for a while, for a year, or for two years, or for t if you're really going to be an elite player, maybe for 15 years. Uh, and the life of an elite footballer is not uh, the ordinary life of uh, a girl 16 years old. So you definitely need to be really mentally strong, yes. So what are we doing uh, to actually mentally prepare our under-17 girls team uh, you know, the pressure that they are going to probably face once they play, you know, all the rest of the countries who have been, uh, you know, classically used to playing at every age group. Our country is doing it for the first time with the girls. What are we doing to make sure that they are mentally prepared for that? Uh, of course, uh, you have to be honest and understand that uh, before the first game we will play in the World Cup, some of the girls will be really nervous and that is natural we uh, but we used to talk with them about some players can also be that nervous that they feel a little bit uh, almost ill but they are not sick so if you have to go to the toilet one extra time it's it's not uh, it's natural it's happened to everyone the first time so don't worry about that it's not about uh, that your body is uh, uh, gonna give up before the game it's it's uh, natural and we also talk a lot with them about when they come to this moment when it's time uh, they will do what they have prepared for for a really long time they will do what they do best in life uh, they really have the chance to show the world and uh, enjoy that we can play really good football and often when you know the situation and you can do something that you know that you handle, it's easier to handle it. Uh, I was uh, sometimes very nervous before games, uh, but exactly at the same moment when the referee whistle, you forget about all that. You don't hear the crowd, you, you just focus on the game and that you were nervous before it's gone and all that. And that, we probably happen to to the girls also so um, and all and I used to say to them uh, if someone should ask me to go uh, into this field and sing a song I will be extremely nervous and I know I can't sing what should I do but if someone wants to send me in to play football I will go directly because I know I handle it so it's all about preparations uh, to help you to feel comfortable. And that is uh, so true. There is no shortcut. There is no easy way and so on. You have to go through all this. The first game is always the first game. You can't run into a third game. You have to pass the first game to get that experience. And that is some situation that uh, it is what it is, and we we need to handle it. So we talk, of course, a lot of the a uh, lot uh, about this uh, with the girls. Coach, the girls got uh, a taste of what is going to come when they played the friendlies against Thailand and Sweden last year. Uh, what did you think about their performance during that series? Uh, I think uh, the first game against Sweden was uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, actually, we could have scored a, a couple of goals, and uh, the Swedish team were definitely nervous. Uh, like 60 minutes in uh, uh, to the game, and it was uh, still a little bit open game. Of course, Sweden was a little bit better, but we created chances. And the game against uh, Thailand, we played very well for. Uh, 75, 80 minutes, and we should have scored uh, a couple of goals, but uh, we couldn't really finish. And that is one thing that we need to work with because when it comes to the World Cup, you maybe get two, three chances in a uh, good chances in a game, and you have to 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 score when you get your chance. You will never get seven, eight chances against Sweden or Germany or whoever comes. <laughs> so you need you really need to to score when you have the chance. 
Uh, and, but the third game uh, against Sweden was a little bit tougher. Uh, in the final, Sweden played very, very well early uh, in the game, and uh, they had two uh, early goals in. And uh, honestly, that could have been a third goal really early also. So uh, we were really in trouble. And uh, but also maybe we were a little bit too optimistic after the first game against Sweden. And we played with our defending line a little bit too high the first 20 minutes. And Sweden have two really exceptionally uh, speedy forwards, so they run behind us. But when I I tell the girls to, we need to go back a little bit. We need to def defend a little bit lower. We close down that open areas for them. And so, uh, but we learn we learned something uh, also that game. So uh, it was a good tournament. <laughs> Every game is a learning experience, coach. Yes, and, of course. Uh, um, tell us, do you think the physicality of the girls, like the Swedish girls were like towering above most of our girls. Does that really make a difference or no? Did you say about the, the physical? The physicality of the girls, the structure, yeah. they're taller, they're tougher. Yeah, yeah I think... At that time, we have been working together for a little bit more than one month. And uh, in the end now, when we come to the World Cup, we have one year to prepare the team. And I can, I can see when I follow the team every day, uh, and also from the test results now, that the physicality of the team is uh, really improving quickly. So uh, I hope that can also be a, a, a really good thing for us when it comes to the tournament. Uh, I can promise you already now that we will send out a team with uh, uh, high endurance level and uh, also a strong team. So it's getting better and better for each day. Well, that's so good to hear. Um, uh, can you um, elaborate a little more about the other Asian teams that are going to be in the World Cup like uh, Japan and probably Korea? Yeah, I've seen uh, a couple of videos with uh, Japan, and they have a extremely, I will say, good team. Uh, the passing game is uh, beautiful. Uh, it's uh, well, for a coach. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, I don't know, see a good film or <laughs> uh, listen to a nice song. It's uh, it's uh, beautiful to see them uh, uh, the game, the passing game, and the, the attacking game. They have they're really, really, uh, really skillful in the passing game. Also with the ball, they use both feet. They are quick, really quick. The first uh, five, six, seven steps, uh, and so on. Maybe uh, if it comes to uh, to game when we have to play them, we can use that we have the same speed and uh, on the little bit longer rounds. I don't think we will uh, have the same uh, speed the first five, six, seven steps because they they they're extremely good uh, in these ones. So, but in in longer rounds, I think we can take them, and that means that we need to have a little bit bigger game. So. Uh, yeah, we have to open up the game to use all the field because if it's a small game, it will be an advantage for Japan. So. Uh, and uh, yeah, Korea, I haven't seen them. Uh, uh, never seen any of Korea's uh, youth team. I only uh, We played uh, Korea in the World Cup 2011 with the Swedish national team. And they also... Uh, like uh, Japan, also skillful with the passing, but a little bit more uh, physical, I will say. Uh, a little bit stronger, but uh, the same type of football. But uh, Japan, for the moment, uh, is a little bit better. Coach, um, communication plays a very important role with team, you know, uh, the way a team blend with one another. How do you think our under-17 team is with the communication with each other on the field and off the field? Uh, I think it's it's getting better and better. Uh, they are a little bit quiet, 
uh, and I'm trying to encourage them to, to talk more and to help each other on the field. Also to give directives, uh, because when you're on the field, you can always uh, uh, shout to your friend, because sometimes you need to shout to hear each other, uh, that please help me, you have to go a little bit higher, or you have to come a little bit lower, or you have to move a little bit more inside when the ball is on the other side. I need you to support me behind and so on. And to help the players to understand that sometimes you need to be a little bit tough on each other on the field. It, it doesn't mean that you're not the best friends. <laughs> so, yeah. because when you leave the, the field, it's another situation. But sometimes someone has to take the responsibility to, to be the one that maybe shout a little bit, uh, come on now girl, we have to lift ourselves, we have to do work a little bit harder or whatever it is. And uh, that is important to have uh, a role uh, model that can can do that because uh, it, it helps every team. Uh, to. And I, I remember when I was playing uh, the best years we have with my team, Hamabi, was when we were most angry on each other on the field and best friends outside. We were really tough with each other and really, I would say, demanding. And we uh, we were never satisfied with what happened on the field. Even if we were 3 nil up, we were shouting on each other. And we were really tough with each other on the field. But we have some beautiful times outside. So uh, to go from, from uh, this to relax, to be serious, to focus on the game, and help each other to win the game because that is what it's about. When it talk elite football, it's about winning. When it comes to the World Cup, no one will help us and no one will celebrate us if we lose all the three games but play really nice football. You need to take points, you need to win games when it comes to championships. It's not about having a, a nice two weeks. So, coach, you're going, to, you're going to have a tough task uh, with inculcating that winning mentality into this team. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think they're <laughs> it's 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 coming. They they I think they know and uh, understand now, uh, uh, and I also understand because they come from different parts of uh, India. It's a really big country. And uh, some talk a little bit more, some talk uh, less, and so on. So it's it's natural. But uh, I think when when we comes to the championship, and also for every day, they learn to know each other better and better. And you better you learn another person, you're more honest you can be. Uh, so uh, I think that the time is uh, helps us. Coach, has this postponement in the game had any effect on any of the players? Have they become anxious because of the weight or anything? Uh, I hope not. Uh, I've, every day I follow with the girls on my uh, cell phone. Uh, they have a, a, a fitness program, both for endurance and also for uh, for the the workout for the strength training and uh, me and Per and I guess also the other coaches in India we are following it uh, every day and can see when they report and so far what I can see uh, what they send to me regularly they, they are all doing like five six sessions a week so I'm not so worried about uh, the, the fitness level when they come back I hope it will be good or even better. Uh, but of course, we miss some time together to work with the, the tactics and the, uh, the game plan and all that. Uh, but uh, I hope we can handle that also. Uh, but the most important thing and the, the only thing that worries me a little is uh, how many exposures can we have? Is there any team to play? Uh, because I really want us to play teams that still a little bit uh, higher ranked uh, than our team and maybe a little bit better so we also can improve and uh, play in a higher pace, uh, quicker decision making, uh, 
uh, quick passings, fewer touches on the ball and all that to, to speed up the pace. And uh, to do that, you need to play really good teams because sometimes when you play teams that are lower ranked, that you that you can beat, I will not say easily, but that you normally beat, sometimes it gives you a feeling that, okay, we will handle it, we'll handle it. And then you come to and play teams that are playing in a, on a different level. It can be like a shock if you're not... Uh, used to it so that's what i'm hoping for that uh, the corona don't stop us from good exposures this autumn yeah of course realistic uh, competition is what the girls need exposure to and uh, i guess they'll get better by just playing better teams yeah we're going to give you a little break here coach because we've been talking non-stop <laughs> for such a long time uh, we'll go back to memol again memol Memol, are you there? Memol, can you hear me? Okay, Memol. Can you hear me? Memol. Ah, yeah, yes. there she is. Memol, you went for a quick coffee? No, no. <laughs> Tell. <sighs> okay, Memol. So uh, we've been listening to Coach talk about his expectations with the under seventeen team. Tell me, uh, do you all coordinate with the under-17 team, the senior team, the under-21 team, if there is one for girls? Do you all all have um, common coaching or common coaching philosophies or common playing philosophies? Like uh, probably formations and all? Uh, at present, what I am using, I'm sure uh, Thomas is not using or what Thomas is doing, I am not doing for sure. But then uh, we, we have a plan chopped out in nearby future, we sit together, we plan out in a, uh, together and we might do uh, kind of uh, because, uh, because of this corona also has come in. So maybe the camps might be in the same place and you know, we'll have more interaction with the uh, especially under 17 team, the senior team. So at present, it's only two teams who, which are actively uh, on with the national team. That's why. Okay, so eventually you will all have a uniform uh, coaching pattern. So the girls that start playing, let's say under 17, will go on to, you know, get used to that style of play going forward to the senior women's team. You can say that, but then definitely the ideas and thoughts will be different because uh, every coach has their own philosophy and things. But yes, we will try and, you know, build it together. Okay. Okay. Uh, wanted to ask you, Memol, um, how important is communication for a team to do well? Oh, definitely. That's that's one thing where uh, for the senior team, it's one of the key key point. I f believe because uh, with the senior team, at least I a lot of meetings being held uh, in uh, before the sessions, a lot of talks. After the session, a lot of meet. Uh, you know, team get together and then each individual communication is there so especially a player to coach or player to player sometimes it's a player doesn't want to tell you because if they are scared or something like that another staff takes over you know I, I, I can say that I really have a, a good team behind team that's the staff what I have at present so it becomes good for me like if not me some some other staff takes over and you know the players have a good communication they have a good chat and then i i have the whole thing what is going around so i think that that's one thing which is uh, important which plays an important role at least in the in our team for now that's amazing that's amazing that way you have your, the girls have your ear basically yes so. <laughs> hear out everyone whether they talk to you directly or indirectly which is yes. amazing uh, another thing i want to ask you what is the breakup of the team is it still uh, tilted towards majority being from northeast or what is the composition of the team now uh, there is northeast girls you cannot say no or deny there are presently there were nine girls with the national team but if you see there are a lot of other states which are coming up and there are a lot of other players who are in the camps and it becomes kind of a mixture and we then we try and you know there was earlier like 20 girls in the national team coming from one state but now if you see it slowly if you see under 17 team they hardly have any northeast girls not hardly they have for sure but then there are a lot of mixtures so the younger generation will have 
you know, it will change that northeast part. But yeah, everybody has the right to play, and you know, so other states also have woken up now, and you know, players are coming up for uh, for me at least. I have a bigger pool of players after the under seventeen, I believe. So because a lot of attention and a lot of people have eye opened, and they are they want the girl players to play more. So. So I think that's one of the advantage what we have at present. That's great to hear. Tell me, um, from a language point of view, India is such a big, vast country, and languages are so different. Uh, many times we come across girls who don't speak English or Hindi, but only speak their local language. Uh, in this case, does football become the common language? Does football help everyone just play the game? Oh yes, definitely. That that's the common language, and whenever we are in the national camp, that's the common language we speak on the field. But off the field, also there sometimes it is difficult, but uh, it it goes easier because the staff also can. They also have another like lot of other languages what they know. I know more more. I know few languages from the country, so it becomes easier because especially I remember the northeast players are. Uh, they had a problem but at least in the senior level they are okay they can understand hindi or english the tamil girls especially who came from tamil nadu or pondicherry you can say earlier they were shy to speak english they feel uh, if they speak maybe they will say something wrong so they were more comfortable in speaking tamil which i could understand and you know i could speak to them so the uh, language wise we never had a big problem such on but uh, yeah sometimes it it happens it happens okay I'm only just asking you one more thing. Also, over the years, we've seen a lot of girls from the northeast uh, who have been a part of the Indian national team. Can you tell us what is different about those girls uh, that helped them make it? I mean, what is it? Is it physicality? Is it mental? Or is it just that drive to play football? What is it about them that has helped them make it to the team? I think it's their dedication. The girls in northeast girls, if you see. they practice twice a day I, i cannot say what they are what like who they go to coach or what but they are on the field twice a day they are doing something they are playing most of the girls if you see senior players who have spoken and they will say they have played versus with the boys team so i think it's the dedication what they have towards one game they choose football they play football day and night you can say but for like players from goa if they they have chosen football they'll go for badminton they'll go for swimming they'll go singing they'll go dancing so it becomes difficult because you choose everything at the same time but uh, and then manipur has their manipur league also for women's football they have district tournaments there are many uh, tournaments where club participate in manipur what i have uh, what i know so the girls be with their club teams and they play for the state inter inter uh, inter tournaments so then they are um, in manipur it's like more uh, what do you say women's uh, kind of uh, women's tournament and competition is giving uh, given more priority so i think that's one thing where which keep them on their toes and and naturally how if you say how thomas have already spoken nigerian girls have naturally they are you know um, uh, genetically blessed yes so this manipuris are genetically blessed that's true so basically i think don't you think we should learn from what manipur is doing right and make sure other uh, other states try and follow what they are doing at least to a certain extent to be able to get more girls participating from all different states of india yes i think most of the states have started now at least there are interstate leagues inter district leagues and some tournaments what they are organizing especially the association i think now everybody has you know uh, um, opened their eyes and things are been helping the national team also i am sure because manipur was doing this from years uh, whatever years and now the other states also have started for sure tell me uh, how important are junior tournaments for girls memon uh, playing more more matches i think it's playing more tournaments for me i'll definitely say that will help the players to understand what level they are what level they need to you know come up what level they need to compete So I think tournaments definitely, definitely will help players to understand their where they stand and where the team stand and where they should go also in in future or for the national team or whatever they are looking at. 
Okay, on a lighter note, Mehmal, what is your best experience of uh, working with a girls team? What is it uh, about girls you like working with? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure you work with girls teams and boys teams. Yes. What is more exciting um, about girls teams and that? I think like? uh, especially girls when you're working with them. on the field they are like uh, they have a tough time or whatever once they are out of the field they are the best they talk to you they tell you everything and they even tell you uh, they if they have done one of the you know something less on the field they'll come and tell you you know ma'am i did this less is it how like how how honest they are and how you know they have nothing to hide about at least at least now at least presently with the senior team when we load them they do it and somebody might you know skip one thing and they'll come and tell me ma'am you know i skipped one i say how honest and you come and tell me only so it's one thing where girls are quite open to you and you know that's the best part i think there should be a transparency between a player and a coach so i at least i enjoy that and i really like the girls coming and telling me everything i at least i know most of the players personally also what they do how they do where they go where they stay what they eat. you know that connection also so i think I, i i like that so you are a friend also and a coach also the, yeah i don't know but yeah they somehow a i try friend. to be, a friend i try friend. to be <laughs> off the pitch <laughs> <laughs> off the pitch you try to be a strict friend that's yeah. that's great to hear okay mam all we also are joined by uh, savio sir from aif okay. they're going to get him in and hear his perspective please savio can you please. hear me hello yes hello hello hi anjali hi savio good evening how are you good evening just hi, a minute i think yeah yeah will you please introduce yourself and um, then i'll ask you some questions yes yes just a minute just give me a minute yeah yes yeah sorry uh, no first of all good evening anjali and uh, thomas and mehmal and uh, good evening, all sir. the participants uh, joining in this webinar i think anjali i should congratulate you for the initiative which you have taken to talk on women's football which is not done very much in the country i should also not forgetting your husband ivan which you are doing a lot of work which is not easy to carry on in football knowing the indian conditions and when you try to carry it on so i should i'm really proud of you guys for keeping up and moving on in football in difficult times also but uh, big congratulations i heard i couldn't be there yesterday on the webinar but i heard and got reviews that it was very interesting very thought provoking and lot of uh, good comments which i could hear about it so yeah working a little bit on head of coach education for the moment trying to get on to see that our coaches get better and when you know that uh, the strongest pillar for the development of football in the country should be as far as i know it is coach education so just trying to do a little bit of mine with all the people who are there on this panel who are trying to support some of them who are there attending some of there who have already gone some of them who are there as tutors so yeah with the help of everybody trying to do a bit for the for our country to get better and we all know where we where we are and how much we have to work to go ahead uh um uh, sabir sir tell us how important it is to get more female coaches into this ecosystem uh, in order to be able to get more female players also it's uh, anjali it's not that there are no women coaches there are women coaches in the country and as i always say it's uh, not only the women coaches what i say the some of the men coaches who had done their education long back uh, what has happened is there is wherever they are they are not being mentored or not been seen whether they are doing the right things the same thing has happened to the women coaches who are there right now 
So if we want to grow our women's football, I think the coaches coming in will be very, very important. Although we know that we have, but what my women coaches in the country needs is mentoring, regular uh, keeping in touch. And what is not happening is what uh, you all have been discussing for quite some time, the tournaments, the matches which are not happening. And the matches, what I feel is not only it makes the players better, but it makes the coaches also better because they have to observe, analyze, design, solve problems, design training sessions. So it's both, both the way of process. So I would feel it's a big step. And in our coach education courses, there are always four to six spots which we do try to keep for women coaches. But uh, my idea after conducting courses for quite some time now, few of them are very confident when they come and they are in an atmosphere of uh, uh, within male coaches. But it's, for some, it gets a little bit difficult. So I would always prefer in the future to have courses only for women's together because that would give them more better confidence. That would allow them to challenge within the atmosphere of uh, women within the group. So that is what is my idea about. But very, very important for uh, women coaches to come on board. That's right, Savio. We do. Uh, I completely agree with you about the mentoring part and also the part where, you know, it's important for having more uh, women-centric coaching programs. Uh, tell me, what are your views on the upcoming under-17 girls' uh, World Cup that's going to be held in India in February. How do you think that will impact the growth of uh, football for women in India? I think the bidding and the hosting rights when we got under 17, that itself did bring in a little bit of change in the mental attitude that we have to see that more women girls or girls do come to play football. Where the government is also helping a little bit and it has helped by starting First of all, with the Kelo India Games, which has given a chance to a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of uh, schools which are doing a bit for the girls in the... But knowing a culture, that is a little bit of a drawback for us. But I think we have started. It will take some time. And as uh, we were listening to Coach Thomas, as you were also saying, it is going to be difficult. Yes. But uh, I think he is trying his best with whatever... Uh, whatever uh, quality he has got in his hand. And we all know it's not only the women, but the men also. We all know that our uh, Indian mentality is really to work hard once we are there on the pitch. But what is lacking with us right now at the moment is a little bit of decision making is what we lack. And why do we lack that? What I would say is uh, at the right age, we do not start with our competitions. As we say, that uh, right now the baby leagues have started. If that also happens to our girls, I don't think we should uh, lag much behind. But if we start now, I think it should be a horizon for me for another 10, 15 years down the line, which we get good players who are good decision making, which we lack at the moment in the country. Exactly, coach. Starting young, catching them young, and then making sure that they get channelized into the national age group team. Yep. So coach, basically, um, the reason I have asked many coaches to join in today is because I want all the coaches to understand the importance of following uh, what is required by the national team coach. See, everyone eventually aspires that their players play for the state team, the national team. That's everyone's dream today who's involved in Indian football, at least the serious ones. So, do you think um, the coaches can learn from what it is that the national team coaches want and try and follow a similar pattern of training and coaching so that it becomes easier for the players to make it to national team? Yeah, it's always uh, good to be at a training session, especially when uh, wherever the state, the camp is happening of the national team. I, because I find very rarely our Indian coaches, wherever the national setup is there, the camps, they really rarely come and see the sessions of the Indian team, what they do, how they try to. That is what is missing in us. 
I wouldn't say only the national team, but there are some good ISL teams which are come now, some good coaches which are come down. So they are having some meaningful sessions for us which we can improve on. So that will surely help. And uh, I don't think why, why we cannot improve. But what I would feel also if each one of us tries to see where am I. So what is our culture here in India, to be honest, is first of all, our coach education is very important for each of, our, each of us to grow in the game. But once we try to see, there are so many Indian coaches who have just finished on the panel who are there. They have got an A certificate or a diploma. And they think that I have done my, done my coaching and this is what it is. Now, the certificate is just an idea for you that you have learned something. But for you to get better, if you don't prove it, go and work it out on the field, then you're not going to get better. So I feel that is what is lacking. As Mimol was just talking about the women uh, footballers of uh, Manipur and Thomas was discussing about Nigeria. That is what is missing in our Indian coaches. That fire in the belly to challenge each one of us to work harder, to design training sessions, to be more creative. I think that is what is lacking. But in the overall, uh, if we try to go and see sessions which our national team as Igor in the SAI and the AFF panel also had mentioned, that is open. His sessions are open. Anybody can come and watch. Thomas was doing his sessions down here in Goa. The camps are happening. I don't know how many Goan coaches do go and watch that, which will try to improve us and make, make us better. Because it's not that we are not good, but watching somebody doing something different will always try to improve us and make us better. Oh, uh, Savio, uh, does AIFF have a national curriculum which coaches can follow all across the nation? You know? Is there something in the pipeline or is there something already present? Yeah, so no. Uh, right now what I am focusing is on, uh, what I was focusing on was getting the coaching convention approval, which all have must uh, have heard that uh, AFC had come with coaching convention, what it is there with UEFA. So to get that, it was a very, very difficult task because uh, the, coach, uh, the coach education panel of AFC came down for assessment. And we have got an approval for a license now to conduct a diploma. So now we know that uh, AFC, uh, the AFC C certificate, which was there, AFC is not going to see it is under AIFF. So the courses from AFC comes under AFC B diploma, A diploma, Pro diploma. So that we were working on very hard. The competencies for B, A and Pro are given by AFC, which we have to follow. And one of the biggest criteria is what are there which I was just talking about coaches not trying to, uh, once they get the certificate, they don't want to bother to learn more, but now they will have to uh, coming on refresher courses. Why? Because there is a license which is going to be given to a coach and through that license, they have to keep up to the validity and they will have to attend the refresher courses, which we are going to start now very soon. So through that a national curriculum will follow up in the following years, but right now, I'm working on the revalidation process, which the coaches have to undergo to keep up the license. The certificate and the diplomas are the ones which they attend. But once they are successful, they will be sent a license, which is like a smart card on that the validity time will be mentioned, which happens everywhere in Europe, which has not yet started, which will happen. So that was one of the biggest uh, criteria which was mentioned in the coaching in the coaching convention competency. So that is what we were working on. But very soon we will try to work on, as you were saying, so that all coaches know what we have to do it in India. Excellent. Thank you so much, Savio. Please stay, uh, stay online with us. I'm going to just address a question to uh, Coach Thomas. Um, Coach Thomas? Coach Thomas, can you hear me? Hello? I do. Yeah. Hi, so <laughs> hi Coach. Welcome back. Uh, coach, I wanted to uh, ask you that um, uh, Coach uh, um, Sabio was just talking about how it's important for, you know, coaches to be having a uniform uh, coaching program throughout the country, you know, to be able to, um, you know, make a difference in the larger picture. Tell me in Sweden, do you all, how is the coaching system in school for girls? Uh... Especially for girls, you mean? Girls the coaching or young yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
in Sweden, we usually not have a, a one way for a female coach and one way for a, for a man. We have the same way, but you can choose to only work with the youth players. That is one special. But it starts together, and then after the first, uh, after, after C, uh, you can choose your way if you want to work with senior teams or youth teams and so on. Uh, but we had in the past also special uh, uh, education for female coaches. Actually, I was uh, responsible for that for a while. So I, I had like 25 former uh, league player, national team player and so on. That was uh, getting the first two steps in the in the education together with me they have a like a small shortcut because they don't need to do the the first uh, very basic one if you play 100 caps for sweden <laughs> so you don't, you don't need to know what a, what is a inside pass or so on so but uh, and uh, but the third thing is that uh, out from these 25 girls i had on this course is maybe only three, four of them that still coaching. Uh, for some reason, the situation uh, also here in Sweden is that most coaches are men, uh, and we really need to uh, to find more uh, female coaches. That there is a problem, I will say worldwide, uh, but it's really sad because they are the ones that keep on working. They are doing a good job. Uh, so uh, I definitely do whatever I can to help uh, more girls to come into coaching. Okay, that's that's nice to hear. And um, uh, Maimon wanted to ask you one question over here. Is Tell there me. a difference between coaching boys and coaching girls? Because I was on a, a webinar recently and I was asked a question whether we train girls differently and we train boys differently. So I want both of you to answer this, uh, Coach Thomas also and Maymore also. Both of you tell me, is it necessary to train boys and girls differently? No, but it's only this plan what you have for the day that needs to be, you know, put up to the girls. But there is no, uh, it might be the load and, you know, where you have, where you need to be keeping in consider like the girls under 14 and under 14 boys will definitely not be the same. But a senior definitely will not be the same. But yeah, only leaving that, football is played with both feet and things. Those are all same. But yeah, we need to be a little bit, I think, uh, not use those uh, heavy words for the girls where they get disheartened. And because, you know, the girls are a little bit softer than boys. Other than that, uh, there are a lot of shouts. There are a lot of things being told to the girls and where they need to listen and they need to do where the girls get more, uh, you know, when they, sometimes when you hear uh, a shout, maybe they do it much better. Or when you hear a, a louder voice, you feel like doing it better. So I think that's only different, yeah. But the load definitely when we plan out, we plan out in a, such a way where uh, it's a women's team or the girls. And, and at present, we know what the girls can take and how far they have been reached from my side. So basically, there is no difference and tactically and technically, the game is the same for both boys and girls, right? Yes. Coach Thomas, what, I, what is your opinion on this? Yeah, uh, honestly, when I plan a, a training session, I never think about is it boys or is it girls that will be on the field today. I do the same program. And I know that the girls can handle it as good as the boys can. Of course, there is a difference in the speed, uh, in the power in tackles and uh, all that, that more is related to the physical uh, uh, parts of the game. And, but we can't change that. Uh, but I have played, uh, uh, I train uh, girls that are, extremely good in reading the game they can see different options uh, uh, i used to talk about a girl called victoria svensson uh, she was uh, yeah the second best player in the world during world cup 2003 and i had her in my club team so and she was 
extremely good in reading the game. She found options that you even couldn't see from the stand. <laughs> so, and all that, so, and technical and all that. Uh, so, I, I never think, I never have the feeling that it's a, it is any difference. One thing that I've noted is that girls, uh, actually, they, they really, really want to do and fulfill what coach said. And uh, uh, boys are a little bit more uh, relaxed to, okay, they listen to the coach and they say, okay, I know, I know the, I know the frame of it, but they're a little bit sometimes more going their own way. <laughs> and that could be good sometimes, but it could be bad sometimes. Uh, uh, because it, it's also, even if you have the frame for the girl and the tactics and so on, you also want the girls to, to leave that frame, to feel free, to find another option that you, you didn't tell them, because that could be the most important option they have. And uh, so it's like a balance. How much instruction will you give uh, without uh, uh, without uh, put them in a situation where they don't feel feel free to play and use the best uh, skills and so on? So it, it's all always a balance. Okay, coach. Uh, coach, uh, Memol, coach Thomas is just been joined by. Uh, Coach Mike Dickey from USA. He is uh, signing in from Kentucky, USA. Uh, I'm just going to bring him on and he's going to introduce himself. Uh, uh, hi, Coach Mike. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, probably afternoon for all of you, I imagine. Evening, actually. Evening. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you again after a really long time. It's uh, it's been a long time. Likewise, since the last time we've I've also cool. got uh, Coach Memol on here. Hello, sir. Oh. Hey, hello. Good to see you as well. Same here. A long time before we met in Goa. If you remember me. Yes, I do remember you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was a good a good a uh, couple of weeks we spent together. Yes, true. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, introduce myself. My name is Mike Dickey. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an American. Uh, uh, my experience was uh, several years ago, I was invited to uh, India to work with the women's national team uh, for two weeks and also to uh, work with coaches that coach uh, women's soccer in India. Uh, it was uh, high, one of the highlights of my career, and I've had a, a lot of uh, quality experiences over over my life. Um, I currently uh, work for a soccer club in Kentucky and um, that's my full-time job and uh, in addition to that I, I still continue to work on a pretty consistent basis with U.S. soccer um, in two areas. One, coaching education so I administer and teach the uh, A, B, and C licenses here in the U.S. Um, and I also am active in working and scouting uh, for uh, women soccer players or girls soccer players in the United States. And as you can imagine, uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty big uh, territory here. Um, we have 55 state associations and 50 states and uh, millions of uh, people and lots of good soccer players. So it's a, it's a big task, but it's, it's quite fun. I, um, I've had a, a variety of different experiences as a, as a coach and a player. Um, I grew up playing uh, in Germany uh, and also in Asia for a number of years when I lived in uh, Japan, Taiwan, and the Philippines. Um, the uh, experiences I've had as a coach uh, encompass a lot of areas, including professional men's football in the United States, um, coaching our girls and uh, women's national teams for the U.S., uh, most recently, uh, a couple years ago, I was the head coach for the women's national team of Jordan uh, when we attempted to qualify for the World Cup in, in France. Uh, and I was living in Amman, Jordan for one year. Um, in addition, uh, I've coached uh, the, in the college, uh, college scene here, uh, school, uh, club soccer. Um, and then they have a program called the Olympic Development Program in the United States where uh, players from all the different uh, state associations. Um, they 
the uh, tryout and audition th their abilities and uh, they're, they're picked to be on regional teams and eventually on the women's national team. So, so that in a, in a fast abbreviated way is uh, part of my career. Um, but thank you for having me on. And, and I know uh, Jolly asked me to share uh, some, some best practices from, from, uh, from my experiences. So I'd be happy to share that. And then also answer any questions any of you coaches may have. Coach Mike, you are joined by a very elite company from the AISF. Uh, we also have uh, Coach Thomas uh, from Sweden, who is currently our under-17 uh, girls coach. And Memol is now the coach for the senior women's Indian team. And uh, okay. they both are panelists as well on this uh, webinar. And... Um, yeah, please go ahead and like, uh, give us a little idea of uh, what is the grassroots development pattern in the U.S. Congratulations on winning the World Cup, by the way. And uh, yeah, please let us know what uh, grassroots initiatives are being done in the U.S. Well, um, for both the boys and the girls, um, it's uh, quite common for uh, two, three, four-year-olds um, uh, your old uh, children to start being introduced to the game. So um, you will see kids uh, starting their introduction to the game, uh, whether their parents play or not. They 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 start they sign up and start playing some what they call recreational soccer. Um, so it's not really uh, intense, but it, it, it is giving them initial exposure. And then uh, along the way, uh, when the players are about seven or eight years old, then uh, then then the some of the kids that are, have a show a little bit more ability start to try out for uh, youth club teams. Um, so it's, it, it would be common to see a, an eight-year-old um, or seven or eight-year-old uh, female player or male player uh, starting to play club soccer where they train two to three times a week and then play games on the weekends. Um, and our season typically, uh, for the most part, uh, depending on the weather and what part of the U.S., um, the, the kids would play uh, starting in the August, um, and that would go th all the way through the end of uh, October, beginning of November. Um, in the wintertime, there's uh, futsal uh, uh, leagues and, and so on that take place in the wintertime. And then, uh, and then back in, in March, then everything kicks back in again to, to resume uh, league play. So they, they start playing at a really early age, um, and there's competition. Um, you know, league play that they play, compete in. And, and eventually as they start to get a little bit older, then they also start to take part in tournaments. What it will be like uh, this next year? I don't know. You know, uh, we were talking about it now just due to the coronavirus and all the limitations we'll have on training and so on. But it's, uh, they, they do get exposed to the game pretty early. We, as you may know, and probably similar to in India, um, there are competitive sports, there are other sports uh, that, that, that other children also opt to play in as well. So a lot of our athletes have many choices and, um, we just try to get to them at an early age when they're young to introduce the game to them to, and then allowing them to eventually to make a choice what, what sport it is that they, they are kind of most inclined to play. Uh, Coach, we also have with us uh, from the AFF who's the uh, head of education, Savio Madeira. And uh, he's also going to be, um, he spoke a little earlier about what the coach education initiatives are in India. Uh, tell me, what is the ratio of female coaches to male coaches in the U.S. working with women's teams specifically? Um, it's, still, uh, it's still not high enough. Um, and for whatever reason, even though we have a, you know, a extremely large number of women that play and girls that play, um, and for whatever reason, um, when uh, some of the women uh, finish their playing careers, whether it be in college or high school uh, or beyond, some of them are not transitioning back into, um, in, into coaching. And I don't really have a true answer why that is, um, whether they're not being provided the opportunities uh, at a fast enough rate um, or whether it, um, it's not always the, the best paying job in the world to be a soccer coach. Uh, so, um, and a, a lot of our uh, players do tend to go the college route. So they, they, they play college soccer. And then when they finish going to college, they have a college degree. 
and some of them opt to say, well, I, I can make more money uh, in another sector, uh, you know, doing another, another line of work other than soccer. So it could be more of a hobby uh, type job for some women uh, versus men. And, and some women uh, just don't opt to do it. And so we don't know why uh, that is. And I know, I know that they um, have women's advocacy uh, groups here uh, in the United States, which is trying to get a better understanding of why it is that uh, there aren't more women. It's not equal to the number of men that are, are that are uh, coaching. I do feel one one area um, where potentially um, there could be some level of discrimination in that you know it's, it seems to be okay for a, a woman to coach uh, girls or or women, but you don't see uh, as many uh, women coaching boys. Uh, and versus, you know, in, in my case, you know, I've always been allowed, uh, it's been acceptable for me to coach uh, males or, or females. So I, I wonder if that could be some of the limitations is that certainly it, you know, there are fewer jobs if you can only coach girls soccer. So oh, I guess it's like a worldwide problem, not only a problem in India, but it's a worldwide problem where women representation needs to be upped up and uh, probably women be given equal opportunity to also coach boys. Actually, that's a very good suggestion. There will be so many more female coaches in the world if it becomes acceptable for everyone to be coached by women. Um, coach, you Tella, are seeing, um, Angela, you are seeing um, in other sports. So, for example, in the NBA uh, and the NFL, um, for the first time, you're starting to see women uh, coaching uh, on, on these professional teams. So I know in the Super Bowl, um, I think it was the 49ers out of San Francisco, they had uh, one of the coaches uh, was, was a woman on that, on that uh, staff. And you, you've seen it in the NBA as well. You're starting to see more women officiate men's games on, on, the, on the soccer or football side. So that you, you're starting to see it. Um, but now I'm just waiting to see it in, in, uh, in soccer as well on the coaching. And I, and, and I know from my own experience, when I've run – uh, Olympic development programs, you know, I've had women on my staff that have coached uh, the guys teams, uh, but that's, that's uh, quite rare to be able to see that. And uh, so I'm, I'm waiting for the opportunity to be able to see that flipped over and uh, given women more opportunities to coach. And because some of them may, they may choose to coach a boys team because maybe that's something they're more interested in possibly. Can you tell us a little about the national women's soccer league structure in the U S yeah, it's called the NWSL, and um, I believe there are approximately about eight teams uh, in the league at the moment. Um, of course, no one's playing right now, but um, they're, they're uh, scattered all over the United States. Uh, it's the third uh, league that we've had in the United States, uh, probably in the last uh, 20 years. Um, and uh, every team has uh, national team players from the United States on it. Um, it is partially funded by U.S. Soccer, so they are getting some assistance by the Federation to make the league vi viable. Um, and it has a structure just like the MLS and, and the men's so side where they have a commissioner and they have a structure and it's uh, professionally run. The women are all um, uh, on salary, um, some more than others, obviously. The, the women that are on our women's uh, national team for the U.S. are or the, the, the women that are making the most money, of course, because they're getting a salary from the NWSL plus a salary from playing for the Federation. And so, um, but they do have a league that goes, um, typically would start about now and go through uh, the end of the year through November, uh, October, November time period. And, uh, and it, it is growing. Um, I know uh, we're scheduled to have a, a team in 2021 here in Louisville, Kentucky, um, a women's team. And I would, uh, it, and hopefully uh, a few more, but obviously I, you know, I, I know sports all over the world right now are kind of waiting to see what, what happens now due to, you know, the economy getting rocked like it is. Yeah, it's pretty much the same all over, but uh, the good thing is we can use this time to actually connect with everyone in the world and learn from each other's experience and uh, help each other grow the game in the world. Uh, Mike, I want to ask you, uh, what impact has winning the Women's World Cup had on the overall development of the growth uh, in the States? Well, I, the women winning the World Cup and having won uh, in the Olympics, and you know, they've had a history of success. Um, 
it has been, has been huge for not only for the girls game, but the boys game as well, because it always increases the popularity uh, of the sport to all, all Americans that, that live here in the United States and, and overseas, because uh, by them being able to uh, lift the trophy and watching them win, uh, you know, on a big stage like that, um, you get more and more kids that want to, to become soccer players when they grow up. So they certainly, um, all, all the women's players have been extremely great role models. Um, you know, I, and, and I'm, I'm always proud when I get to see them because so many of them currently right now that are on the team were players that I had as youth players when I was coaching on our youth national teams. So being able to watch them now um, on the big stage and uh, spending time with young, young girls and boys after the game, signing autographs, talking to them, taking the extra time to go out of their way to be available for uh, fans to, you know, enjoy them. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a proud moment for us, but I know it uh, certainly it's helped um, sponsorship uh, because our women uh, have won uh, more exposure to the game as, as a whole. Um, and just the, watching them play uh, makes it exciting for everyone because uh, if you're a soccer fan, you enjoy watching our, our women's national team play because uh, of the, the way they play and the excitement they play and the passion they play with. So it's been, it's, uh, it's been great to, to watch. I think probably the U.S. is one of the few countries where the women's team has been doing consistently better than the men's team. Am I correct about that? Yeah, yeah, they, they certainly have had, uh, uh, you know, very good success on the women's side, more so than, than, our, than our guys. Um, our guys have done, have, have done well, especially since they qualified for the World Cup back in 1990 in Italy and uh, have, have progressively uh, done very well. Some of our youth uh, national teams on the boys' side have done well, uh, probably better than our girls' side on the youth national team side recently. Uh, but certainly on the senior side, um, our women right now have, have been able to have much more success at the Olympic level and also uh, in the World Cup level, uh, which, which, uh, which I think is, is great that they're the ones that are leading the way and, and uh, in the front right now for us. Just want to ask you one question, Coach. Uh, the players who are uh, a part of your National Women's Football League, um, do they get paid by the National Football League or do they have other jobs? Is football, their, uh, soccer their full-time career or do they do other things as well? Well, that's a good question. The, the, the women that play both on our women's national team and in the league, are that's, that's their exclusive salary. And I'm, and I'm sure that they, uh, they have agents like all pro soccer players and uh, and, and do appearances and do other things to supplement their income on top of that, which I think is very smart right now uh, while, while um, you're in the public eye to do that. Um, the women that don't play on the national team uh, do get paid. Uh, however, uh, it's a, a salary in which I'm, I'm sure many of them have to supplement and do additional things. So you're starting to see um, our, our U.S. Soccer Federation is, has uh, started uh, – creating uh, courses, soccer courses for, uh, for women exclusively. And they invite um, the, some of the female players from the, the pro league to, to join so they can become licensed in the event when their career ends, that then they can go on to potentially coach. Uh, so yeah, yeah they, they make money, but uh, of course, uh, many of them are supplementing it by doing camps and appearances and so on. And then, of course, there are some that get out of the game because um, it's just really not a great, uh, great, great salary. And that was also the case uh, back in the late 90s when MLS started as well. Uh, some of our men were not making very much money and they would get, also get out of the game because it was, wasn't enough to survive on. Overall, uh, how, how much more popular has soccer become in the last couple of years? compared to the other games that are very popular in the United States currently? Well, I'll give you an example here just locally. Um, eight years ago, um, in my club, we, uh, if, if you asked uh, people in, in the state of Kentucky to name uh, three uh, major league soccer teams in the United States, they would be very, it would be very difficult for them to do. So we affiliated with uh, the Chicago Fire, our club, and we had been with Chicago Fire the last eight years. 
uh, in that eight year uh, span of time. Now we have a pro team in our city, uh, which also has a youth club. Um, uh, the neighboring cities that are close by Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and Nashville all have major league soccer teams with youth clubs. Um, so just in an eight year period, um, you're seeing an explosion right now of, of professional soccer uh, all over the United States. Um, we, prior to that, we've had a lot of college programs uh, and a lot of high school programs, but now to watch pro soccer just explode all over the U US, uh, I think it's due to the popularity of, you know, both our women's team and our men's team and um, just the game overall as, as a whole. Um, and, and the fact that now, even today, uh, you could turn on the television and watch games. I know the Bundesliga is happening today. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone now is being exposed to the game globally and also here in the, in the U.S. So it's, uh, it's exploded. And, you know, we've had, you, if you watch some of the guys and, and, and the women that are playing internationally as well in, you know, other countries, um, that also uh, brings popularity because you can watch a guy like Christian Pulisic um, uh, play uh, over now in England. Uh, and he was in Dortmund. Um, and he was a, a, a local kid who I had in our, one of our training centers uh, several years ago. And, um, and, and now he's playing on a, on a global stage. So uh, now uh, boys and girls can aspire to, to do that. And, and, and now there's, there's possibilities. There's, there's clubs and uh, programs where they can join. So it's really, really grown a, a lot. And I, I moved to the, back to the United States in 1996. And in just in that time period right now, it's, it's, uh, it's remarkable how, how much it's changed, changed and grown. Good to hear that, Coach. Uh, does the Na National Women's Soccer League have any foreign players? Um, yes, it does have foreign players. And initially when the league started, they had an arrangement with uh, the Canadian uh, Football Association and Mex the Mexican Football Association that each team would have... Um, you know, they, they, they would have some of their players in the league and then they would pay for them uh, part of their salary to be in it. Uh, I don't know if that's still in play right now because I know Mexico has really taken off and now each one of the, the pro men's teams in Mexico uh, has to have a women's uh, pro team as well. So I think women's football in Mexico is taking off. So I think they're, as a result, uh, a lot of their focus has been growing the, the women's game back in Mexico. And Canada still has many of their players that play in the league, but I don't think they're mandated to, uh, their national team players are not mandated to play in, in the U.S. Whereas our, our women's national team players must play in our league. So they can't exclusively only play in England or, or in Germany or, or Sweden. They, they have to play. Their, their first job has to be playing in the U.S. league. Okay, I guess that's fantastic because that uh, helps them make the game stronger for their country. Yes. Uh, Savio, do you, uh, okay, uh, Mike, I'm going to just address the next question to Savio. Savio, do you think we need to have an ISL kind of uh, tournament for India to give... Uh, uh, the similar opportunity to girls in um, football? Uh, um, good evening, yeah, I do believe. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Savio, Savio. Yeah, okay. So what I was saying was, uh, Anjali, for the moment, what we have done is we have started with the IWL. Yeah. And to carry out from there, I would also feel at least a team, one or two foreigners, if we include, which are good ones, which will be a lot of learning for our girls to look at the professionalism, what is there. And uh, if I say, if our standard of men's football is gone a little bit higher, I would say a little bit of good quality players, not all of them in the ISL, but yes, there are some good quality players which have come, which they have learned a lot from them, their professionalism, the way they build up, the way they try to keep themselves fit. So a lot of things. So I feel... The IWL, which has started, has taken in the right step. We, we want to have more teams. So the more the teams, the more the base of players will try to grow. And from there, I think if we can include one or two foreigners from Asia itself, there are a lot of good, uh, good ones in Australia, Japan, Korea. So include maybe one or two to give a little bit of push and a little bit of name outside the country as well. It will do, it will do a lot of good for the game. Okay. Coach Thomas, yeah, one, uh, one question to you. 
do you believe that um, coach thomas do you believe yes. that um, we can give some indian girls an opportunity to play at some club level in sweden yeah I, definitely but it's uh, all about uh, what you can do on the pitch that decides wherever you uh, you can play if you really have the passion and really want to go all the way uh, there is really good opportunities for everyone not only to play in sweden uh, to play in the best leagues in the world wherever it is uh, so of course uh, uh, but no club will take a player today in the professional league just for friendly reason if you say like that so yeah. of course it's about your performance yeah no no i completely mean on merit it has to be on merit the girl has to yeah. be good enough to yeah. be able to play in your league. yeah 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 okay we are going to take a short break over here after which we are going to come back and address two two questions to each panelist yeah short break over here for 2 minutes let's get uh, everyone back over here let's have everyone back is everyone uh, is everyone back in the meeting can you all hear me yeah i'm back okay uh, mike one question for you um, what are the steps any player needs to take if she is willing determined and possesses talent in order to play for her country well uh the steps they have to take it's it's quite it's quite lengthy but um one uh one you ha do have to exhibit some level of athleticism if you want to play for your country because if you're going to be uh competing globally uh, you know all the women um all over the world that play for their country have some level of athleticism that separates them from from other female or male players um they also have to have a uh, possess a uh, a great deal of technical skill uh their ability to manipulate the ball at a high speed uh having a uh, very good ball control whether it be a dribbling uh passing shooting um uh so that th those are a couple of qualities uh a certain level of, of aggressiveness uh to to uh, get the ball back if it's lost so you would rarely ever see a player uh you know uh, at the global stage that is, can only play offense or only play defense they have they have both qualities so you would look for somebody that can can contribute to the game defensively uh but at the same time also when the when the ball is regained and you want to go on offense this player has the ability now to create plays offensively um and uh yeah uh those are just a, a couple of different ideas uh but uh you know we look at some main qualities for our some of our players and one of them is do they have the ability for to to be able to contribute to the game for 90 plus minutes so technically uh physically all right and also mentally 
Uh, so uh, it, it can't be a player that uh, plays great for t uh, 15 minutes out of a 90 minute game. It's somebody that even in the 91st minute, they're still able to stay uh, checked in and focused and maybe creating a goal scoring opportunity uh, late, late in a game. So those are, those are for me qualities uh, uh, that we look for in the U S for players that are, you know, overall, you know, uh, uh, very important for, for our players. And I would think for any country uh, that, that would be very, very important to have players that could do those things. Okay. Uh, Coach Thomas, question for you. Uh, what do you think about the women's football infrastructure in India compared to that in Sweden? Uh, yeah, what can I say? A little bit uh, uh, around what we were talking about before. I think in, in Sweden, uh, all teams are very well organized. Uh, the discipline is high and the fitness level is good. Uh, definitely, but uh, I think that uh, in India you can find a player with uh, really good technical skills. The passing game is uh, as good as it is in Sweden and so on. Uh, so, yeah, maybe the pace in the game it's a little bit higher uh, in the uh, in in the in the best leagues in the world, but. Uh, uh, definitely, I think that India have the opportunity to reach that level. It's all about to have a good plan for the girls from the uh, first day you start playing football and paying attention to this sport so all the way until you're ready to, to enjoy the senior team. If you have a good plan, I think the Indian uh, league could be as good as the others. Definitely. Excellent. That's so good to hear. Uh, my next question is to uh, Savio. Savio, uh, is it possible to have a coaches clinic by the national team head coach for three or four days uh, just to give them an idea about what is expected of them as coaches and what is required in a player to be a national team player? Yeah, why not? I think if it's from a national coach and if you're thinking if uh, the good ones, what we have now at the moment, if by Thomas or by Igor, if they are okay with it, I think we should do it because their experience will try to inspire them to be better. Their uh, stories will try to take them to a different level. So uh, why not? If they are ready, I'm always uh, open for this idea of getting, especially the women coaches would help a lot. Okay, excellent. That sounds really good. And uh, any final words, Savio? I know you have to head out for your workout. So, no, first any of final all, words yeah, to everyone all, on this webinar? Yeah, first of all, I would, uh, I enjoyed the time. Heard, uh, about, heard what Mike had to say about US football. Thomas, which such great, rich experience of uh, coaching for Nigeria, Sweden, and then getting him as one of the coaches for India and he's accepting our Coach's role is a big thing for us because we can learn a lot of things. Uh, congratulations to you once again for uh, getting this webinar done so that in this lockdown period, uh, coaches have been kept uh, updating of knowledge with different speakers on the panel, on the platform. And uh, wish all the best for Mimol for her preparation for the future. And all the best for the coaches and all the best for you to Anjali and Nirwan. Keep the work going. And thank you for me, uh, having me here. And uh, all the best. Thank you so much, Savio. Thank you yep. so much for being a part of this webinar. My next question is for Memol. Uh, the question is from Rajeshri, Rajeshri Bhattacharya, who says that while pep talk can inspire and motivate players, too much of it can also create pressure sometimes as well. Uh, how does a coach draw the line between the two? Too much is everything. Too much in, if it is too much of sugar, also it's a problem. If too much of salt, also it's a problem. Yeah, as coaches, we definitely know where to draw a line. And, you know, uh, we are with players only when we meet in the meals or, you know, when we are outside. The room is their private place where they need to enjoy, or enjoy themselves or TV or uh, the colleague who they are sharing the room with. 
but then overall the manager has a look over if they are having any problems in the room because they are staying in the best of the places so i think uh, definitely as coaches we know where to draw our line and how far we can go and how where we need to stop so i think uh, as as uh, as a friend also you need to know how far you can you know uh, go and where you need to stop yourself so it is it is definitely not mm, not like a big issue for us but then yes it is it is how she said it is where you need to know where you need to draw a line uh, the next question is for coach mike uh, the question is how many games do women players play a year at any age group level until they reach a senior level um let's uh it's that's always a good question it's a debate too or or do we we have a tendency sometimes in the US to do too much um so it, we the, a, a player could play anywhere from 30 to 60 plus games a year at, at uh, almost every age um so uh for example you know a 15 year old may play uh r- r- literally 60 to 90 games in in one one year and uh sometimes we find that um some of our kids are playing more games than 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 pros play which is uh, is a bit much uh and and why that is I, i'm not sure why it's set up that way uh it, it you know we we're trying to do the best we can to have a better ratio of training to games uh and we've certainly made a lot of progress in that but uh if you look at what's going on in the college world or the high school world here in the US it's it's uh they they play their season predominantly from august through uh, the end of october beginning of november and uh they play way too many games uh in a short period of time so it would be common to see sometimes two at least two to sometimes three games per week uh in, in those leagues which is uh it, which is not not right and it's one of the reasons why we have so many injuries due to the fact that we don't have that balance okay the next question is for memol uh memol would it offer to help uh, sorry would it help to offer grants and scholarships to allow or encourage more women to pursue their coaching licenses in india yes definitely if somebody is willing to sponsor a thing because as as we know as into we get into coaching and we need to do licenses now it's really a big money what a female or male coach needs to spend so if there is some grant and things uh, it will definitely help uh, more and more females to take interest and you know do more courses and keep upgrading themselves uh the next question is to coach thomas uh coach thomas how many hours do you think uh, a girl needs to practice per week to actually become a uh, elite player yeah that's uh, hard to say exactly it a little bit depending on if they also are doing uh, other sports because no, i think exclusively uh, football <laughs> exclusively football <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah but it uh, anyway because i'm i'm one of that Uh, persons that uh, really think that uh, young uh, girls and boys should uh, do a lot of sports because that's uh, develop your whole body don't choose your sport when you're seven eight years and you stay with that uh, so but they need to to train uh, yeah in the early ages before you you became a teenager maybe two three up to four times with when you're a teenager you need to go by four or five and if you really really want to be one of the the best player and you want to have it as a job to be a professional you you need to come up to six eight uh, sessions a week or something okay six to eight sessions a week so that's what uh, our most of our players need to start doing i guess okay so any final words from all of you all to all our webinar uh, participants coach thomas beginning with you uh yeah if you should remember something remember that there is no uh easy ways no shortcuts and all that uh, you cannot wish for success you can only prepare for success thank you so much coach your words have been very inspiring and we wish you all the best with the under 17 uh, women's team
and I can assure you everyone on this webinar is going to be backing you and hoping that the Indian girls do their best. And we have no doubt with you coaching them, they will live up to all your expectations. I hope so. <laughs> Any final words before we end this webinar? Uh, first of all, the participants, oh, everybody who's watching, uh, thank you for being in the show and you know encouraging us to you know uh, be more lively in the uh, talks and be more active and uh, speak so i think it's good everybody has joined in because you can hear our team doing what or the under 17 or what us is doing so it's good for you all also to know how things are happening all over the world and at the end i would definitely say i have learned a lot of things from Thomas and Mike Dick and Sir Savio. So it is good for me also to be a part of it because every day it's a learning process for me. And thank you, Anjali, especially for you because you have invited me for this thing. And it was great for, be, for me being a part of it and definitely I have learned a lot. Thanks a lot for this. Thing. Thank, thank you, you so much, Memol. All the best to you with your senior women's team. And once again, like I said, everyone on this webinar is... Uh, supporting you and the supporting Indian women's team whenever they participate. Uh, Mike, you. Mike, can we have a last few words from you? Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's great to see you all again. Um, one of my greatest experiences was uh, the, the time that I, I went to Goa to have a chance to uh, work with your women's national team and then uh, work with all of you coaches. and. Uh, it, it to this day, it's one of the most outstanding experiences I ever had. And I knew at that time that India uh, was very serious about uh, growing the women's game. And um, and, I, and and it, it appears that you're making good progress uh, in in doing that and having a plan for a league and uh, you know having good coaches coach your uh, youth national teams and your senior national teams. So I'm, I'm very glad that you're uh, you're going. You all are going in the the right direction, which is which is important. And um, based on my experience working with your women's team, uh, I could see at that time that there was a great promise uh, because there were very good players, uh, women that were passionate about playing and competing on a global stage. So, uh, you know, I, I wish you well. I think you'll, you know, if it's done properly, you'll, you you all will do great. So I'm excited to watch you all continue to get better. I wish Thomas and uh, Memo, uh, good luck with the with the teams. I hope that you all will have success, uh, and I hope I get to see you again someday uh, in the future. Any chance of playing a friendly match before the <laughs> Under Seventeen World Cup? <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, can you help us with that? Organizing a friendly match with the US team? Yeah, just let me know. Uh, whenever uh, things get cleared up, I know our, our youth teams are, are shut down right now and our women's team is probably trying to figure out how to get ready for the Olympics uh, next summer. So, but uh, uh, just let me know if there's any, any, any connections you want me to make. If, uh, Thank you so I, much, Mike. You know we will depend on you. You are our friend in the U.S. soccer. Yes, yes, always. Would like to thank everyone who's joined us today on this webinar. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure to work uh, with Mike, with Coach Thomas, with Memol, with Savio to get a coach's a perspective on Indian women's football and international women's football and how we can combine the two to actually help Indian women's football to reach the next level. Thank you very much, every one of you and hope to see you soon. Tomorrow, we are having another session 